follow the future. Why did she do it? Why would she follow the future glimpsed within those inky shapes, placing faith in intangible prophecy, dissipating like smoke yet conveying the full weight of truths, tragic, inevitable. Perhaps there is wisdom in that old adage, proclaiming it better to have loved and lost than never loved at all. After all, if no joy is permanent, neither is any heartache, and we are never bereft of hope as long as we refuse to be overwhelmed by a glass half full of sorrows, when instead we might savor sensations made richer for acknowledging their nature, pleading like dust to dust, love to loss, loss to hope. <sighs> Writing in the dark, remembering first impressions which defy reason like the cigarette smoke, languidly drifting from her lips, ephemeral wisps reflected in a pair of bright eyes beckoning to share a private exchange. Within the surrounding chatter, their conversation flows freely as the hours slip by and they are alone in the back garden, sipping another round, passing the joint between them. His smoke, now mingling with hers and crafting an air of secluded space wherein there rests the possibility of building something on this fragile foundation of a chance meeting, even if such expectations often prove misguided, leading to nothing more substantial than the evaporating smoke. Oh. Wednesday evening, Marriott Suites. It is hard to catch your breath when you are always on the move. During daytime hours, I navigate an endless sea of faces, offering bright smiles with firm handshakes. I'm a perpetual traveler, greeting, meeting, networking, networking, networking. Hello. My name is Ah. You are, then I suppose you know well. Fascinating. I should be moving on when really I needn't. After all, where is there to go? Another rented room? Another Wi-Fi password for my battered laptop, which, strictly speaking, belongs to the company? There is never a desk of my own with old pens to be discovered in the back of a drawer. Instead, there are closets consisting of empty hangers. In the evening, I stretch out beneath white sheets and something too lightweight to be truthfully termed a comforter. Some nights, I lie awake, transfixed by the blinking red light of a smoke detector Wondering, is there anything that distinguishes this one from the one before? Anything that differentiates the convention halls, the people within, clutching, clutching cheap cups of coffee as though they were a pulse. Each of us chasing after our own myth of happiness. This is what brings me satisfaction. In roundtable discussions, I contribute I add something, I make a difference. In hindsight, the rage should have been obvious. After all the teasing and isolation, the disruption at home, the restlessness at school, see how well I avoided any blame by casting myself as a victim of circumstances, not that I understood any of this at the time, as it is impossible to view anything with clear eyes as we experience it. Distance 
is required for that fabled 2020 hindsight which leaves us muttering to ourselves, if only I'd been braver. Courage, that most difficult of virtues, far easier to ignore our nagging doubts than truly wrestle with them. Simpler, to smile and pretend to be the kind of kid that would never smack another's head with a rock. Yeah, I pled ignorance in my defense in the heat of the moment I had forgotten the heavy object tucked away in my coat pocket, leaving me dumbfounded how an everyday winter vest could cause so much pain. Only recalling later the rock in my pocket, like a cocked gun, waiting to go off. And what of the aftermath? I'm told I was suspended, though I have no recollection of it. My strongest memory is spending the remainder of the school day alone in a darkened classroom, drawing dirty pictures. Mm -hmm. If I'm truly honest with myself in all this treasure 2020 clarity, I would admit just how tricky these questions are. Was it only a matter of time until all that pent-up aggression boiled over? Did I eagerly embrace an opportunity to let loose? Have I ever truly regretted any of it? As I said, in retrospect, it was all way too predictable. <laughs> Quicksand. I didn't think of you when I first heard the news. It was only later, while listening to an album, that my thoughts shifted back to how I first experienced these songs. We were in our final days by then, no longer trying to be together, simply trying to pick up the pieces with the least amount of injury. And now, recalling your deep connection to this music, I wish I could break the silence between us by saying how thankful I am for your guidance and opening my eyes just a little further. If only there wasn't all this bad blood, I regret the bridges burned, wanting more friends than enemies, yet being no good at breakups when everything cuts too quick and wounds too deep and all you can do is hurt each other. Years later, I wish a scrap had remained, allowing for some tenuous connection without the fear of being misled. Acknowledgement of what we gave each other. Wow. Need. The strong may take pride in their triumphs and spirited victories, only they are often solitary celebrations held after all other combatants have cleared the field, leaving but brittle laurels for, com for consolation. Comfort comes most readily from weakness in acknowledgement of need which drives us to another's arms, begging the question, how do the strong survive? Thanks, um, Philip. Thank you for all your kind words and support and having me here tonight. And um, thank you, everyone, for listening. I have one left. Metamorphosis. There once was a day when the season, in a transitional mood, offered up a morning full of October's chill, followed by an evening enlivened with a more temperate atmosphere. Naturally, such mixed signals caused copious confusion amongst the local inhabitants who expressed their befuddlement through the shedding of colorful sweaters, adorable mittens, and stylish hats. Amidst all that discarded clothing, our attention settles on a solitary scarf. So unremarkable, it wasn't a surprise to find itself forgotten at the bar. After all, 
its warm fabric was hardly comforting and its faded gray coloring was barely fashionable and its everyday polyester far from chic. Days later, the abandoned scarf lay in a heap beneath the gaze of a stucco dragon, majestically presiding over the room from its nest of scarlet tinsel. Despite the creature's commanding presence, the scarf believed that it caught a glimmer of compassion in the dragon's eyes and offer of solace for the heavy-hearted. So the scarf slithered across the floor and up the wall, entangling itself with cheap streamers identifying. With their disposable nature, gradually wrapping the ribbons so tightly about itself that not even a scrap of fabric was visible as the scarf buried itself deep within the dragon's warmth. In such a way, the seasons passed, fall arriving with full force before being supplanted by winter, which in turn was supplanted by spring, and when the first rays of April light warmed that shiny cocoon, something stored within, stretching and with a smooth, gentle caress, nudged aside those glittery strands, announcing the debut of a brightly colored feather boa, an eye-catching silken beauty which now adorns that stucco sentry, holding court over all the indulging patrons, a few of whom might pause and ponder. What an exquisite touch. How come I never noticed it before? <laughs> Thank you.